Welcome to $100 Plus Mileage, the podcast about the New Hampshire policymaking process covering everything from delivery robots to historic horse racing. Each week, we highlight one of the roughly 1,000 bills that makes its way through the New Hampshire legislature, giving you the unbiased facts, pros and cons, and telling you about how to get involved. We've taken a break this summer, just like the legislature, but now that legislators are gathering for meetings again, we're back for a special episode about the policy and bill-making process. I'm Mike Dunbar, content editor for Citizens Count. And I'm Anna Brown, director of research and analysis for Citizens Count. So as you mentioned, Mike, the legislative session officially ended in June. There have been a few committee meetings since then about redistricting, for example. As the fall comes, legislators will start to get really busy again. So in particular, starting in September, legislators can request bills for next year, 2022. This podcast is all about highlighting opportunities for public input. So here you go. If you have an idea for a bill, something to make our state a better place, you can contact a legislator and ask them to put it in. And today we're going to be talking about that exactly, stories of citizen-led bills. Let's start with a bill that got some national attention. I'm talking about HB 1587. That was a bill passed in 2018 to raise New Hampshire's marriage age to 16 years old. Before then, the minimum age for marriage in New Hampshire was just 14 years old for boys and 13 years old for girls. I know we stay nonpartisan on this podcast, but the idea of a 13-year-old girl getting married is just nuts. Well, Cassandra Levesque, who was a high school student at the time, definitely agrees. She learned about New Hampshire's 13-year-old marriage age after attending a Girl Scout conference on human trafficking and forced child marriage. She was in high school at the time, and she contacted Rep. Jacqueline Silly from Barrington to sponsor a bill to raise the marriage age to 16. Their first attempt in 2017 failed, but the bill passed in 2018. For an extra inspiring follow-up, Cassandra Levesque went on to win election as a state representative. And she's been working to raise the marriage age again, this time from 16 to 18. Okay, our next one is a bill from this year. It's HB 179. That bill enhances penalties for repeat DUI offenders. The new law is named Tyler's Law in memory of Tyler Shaw, a 20-year-old man killed by a repeated drunk driver in 2018. Tyler's mom, Beth Shaw, started work on a bill in uh, 2019 to lengthen the prison time for persons convicted of negligent homicide who have prior convictions for driving under the influence of drugs or liquor. Beth told WMUR that she plans to propose more related legislation in coming years. I have another example of a bill from a high school student. Caroline Dillon was a high school student in Rochester when she learned about the issue of period poverty. Many young women are unable to purchase menstrual products, resulting in embarrassing and disruptive trips to the nurse's office, unhygienic matient pads, or even missed school days. So she contacted Senator Martha Hennessy to sponsor SB 142. That bill requires middle and high schools to offer free menstrual products in girls' bathroom. Governor Sununu signed that bill into law in 2019. Some legislators argue SB 142 puts an unconstitutional spending mandate on local schools, but attempts to repeal the law in 2021 failed. And high schoolers aren't the only students to get involved in the legislative process. There's a long history of elementary and middle school teachers helping their students propose bills to name official state animals. Ah, yes. So we are coming to the now infamous red-tailed hawk bill. You could say that process for that bill went a little bit off the rails in 2015 when a group of fourth graders worked with Rep. Rennie Cushing to proclaim the red-tailed hawk as the state raptor. During a floor debate, representatives argued the bill was unnecessary and inappropriate. Representative Warren Grone memorably uh, said that the raptor would make a better mascot for Planned Parenthood. Yes, and this was while the elementary school students were in the gallery watching. Mm. So (laughs) another time New Hampshire made national headlines, not such a good reason this time. Don't worry, though, there's a happy ending. While the 2015 proposal failed, the students didn't give up on the legislative process. In 2019, Governor Sununu signed HB 280 to designate the red-tailed hawk as the state raptor. I think the students were in eighth grade at that point. Yeah. So most recently, students from the Hollis Primary School worked with Rep. Kat McGee to proclaim the daring jumping spider as the state spider, which sounds terrifying, actually. (laughs) 
<laughs> so it's a great speaking name. Of, yeah, speaking of terrifying, we're going to come to the next one now, which is all about rampaging waterfowl. I mean, if you've ever had a geese run at you, you know what I'm talking about. Right, right. Well, this we have in fact talked about this bill uh, on previous episodes, but let's get into the details. Okay, so in 2018, a constituent reproached Rep. Michael Moffat from Loudoun about a neighbor's ducks invading his property. So New Hampshire had a law against trespassing livestock, but it didn't address birds such as ducks and chickens. It was for cows, which, you know, can like plow through a fence and eat your grass and do a lot of damage. But this person was like, these ducks are coming in and they're literally destroying my garden. They're pooping everywhere. It's crazy. So Rep. Moffat filed a bill to add, quote unquote, domestic fowl to the state's livestock trespassing law, HB 1289. And following press coverage, a bunch of other voters came out of the woodwork to talk about, uh, quote unquote, rampaging chickens. That was in one voter's email that was part of the bill file. And so there there was some debate about whether HB 1289 could be used to harass farmers. And there's also questions about free ranging chickens, et cetera. But ultimately, the bill sailed through the House and Senate and was signed into law by Governor Sununu. This is just a small sample of bills that started with individual Granite Staters. There are many more notable examples from Michelle's Law in 2006, which uh, was aimed at preventing insurance companies from removing students from their parents' coverage if they leave school during an illness to recent proposals to end daylight savings time in New Hampshire. Once again, we're supposed to say nonpartisan, but I'm going to go ahead and say I have no problem ending daylight saving. My cat can't handle the changing dinner time every six months. It just causes uproar in our household. (laughs) All right, Anna. So if I'm a citizen with an idea for a bill, what should I do? You should contact your state representative or state senator. This year, state representatives can request bills from September 13th through 17th. And state senators can request bills from October 13th through 27th. And you can find who represents you by going to the Citizens Count website and clicking elected officials in the navigation bar, then selecting your town from the drop down menu. Usually at this point, we do our Only in New Hampshire segment, which covers a fun New Hampshire factoid, but I feel like this entire episode was an Only in New Hampshire segment. Oh, I mean, we did the, the, the trespassing chickens episode as a fun fact for sure in the past. But I'm going to throw out a quick one for you. Uh, We talked about the state raptor and the state spider. New Hampshire actually has 10 official state songs because one was not enough. So there's a whole list. There's Old New Hampshire, New Hampshire, My New Hampshire, New Hampshire Hills, Ottoman New Hampshire, New Hampshire's Granite State, Oh, New Hampshire, You're My Home, The Old Man of the Mountain, The New Hampshire State March, New Hampshire Naturally, and Live Free or Die. A whole lot of songs. Wow. Wow. That Yeah, that is. there could be a whole mix CD for that. Yeah. I mean, yes, you could do a mix CD. I, I don't... I, I can't vouch for 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 how uh, catchy these are. Well, I think I know the old New Hampshire one because isn't that the uh, Fritz Weatherby theme? Oh, I don't. There's know. There's an old fashioned home in New Hampshire. It's like this very old timey, and it's like the little record playing. You know, everybody, I give you Mike Dunbar who composed our theme music, revealing his his musical talents for you. <laughs> Well, the most recent addition was the, the Live Free or Die. And guess what? It all ties together because it was proposed by fourth eighth graders of Birch Hill Elementary School in Nashua, who also sang the song for the committee that was considering the bill. And looking at the hearing minutes, so supporters agreed it was, quote, quite singable and might catch on. A glowing review for any songwriter. Quite singable. <laughs> Mike, you should write our next New Hampshire song for sure. Well, I was thinking, I'll I'll bet the teacher was like an aspiring songwriter and like convinced this was all a genius marketing scheme. (laughs) It's it's the next step, the next step in your music career. (laughs) That's right. That's right. All right. That wraps up today's episode. You can find more information and episodes at citizenscount.org. Subscribe through your favorite podcast channel or follow us on social media to catch our updates on season two. We'd like to thank Franklin Pierce University for producing and the Granite State News Collaborative for hosting this podcast. Our theme music is composed by Mike Dunbar, the next composer of New Hampshire's (laughs) 11th theme song. And lastly, we want to thank you for giving us a listen and thinking about how you can be part of what makes New Hampshire by the people, for the people. 